I'm trying to increase the sound quality of these videos by putting the microphone right here in front of my schnoz. Let me know what you think of it. Is it too distracting? Does it work? Is it okay? I'm curious to know. It's Ninja Gaiden, okay? Not Ninja Gaiden or Ninja Gaiden, though I don't think anybody has ever claimed that the last one is correct. Just like it's GIF and not JIF. And I know the creator of the animated image in question claims that it's pronounced JIF, but that's not how language works, okay? Language is meant to express the society in which it exists. And so the society dictates meaning and pronunciation, not the creator. Do you think the person who invented the word sick thought that someday preteens would use the word to describe cool things? No, so it's GIF and Ninja Gaiden or GIF and Ninja Gaiden. I don't really care, you know, pronunciation, it's, it's an individual prerogative. What? It's pronounced prerogative? Well, that's bullshite. What? It's pronounced sh No, 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 that can't be possible. Those aren't the same words because I don't have to bleep shite. See, watch. Sh shite. Man, societies are weird, man. But I don't want to talk about that anymore. I, I want to talk about how stupid past generations are, huh? It's gonna be fun. Before I go any further, please consider subscribing to this channel. I make weekly-ish videos about video games, including reviews and humor skits, opinion pieces, and sometimes kind of random thought videos like this very video. Let me know if you like this style of video. I personally like it. It asks a question without answering anything. <laughs> it's very lazy on my part, but I like it. And so what is the thought in this video? The thought is old video games sometimes depress me. See, I've recently been playing through the original Ninja Gaiden on the NES. Why, you may ask? Well, maybe subscribe to uh, the podcast Tales of the Lesser Medium, which I co-host, and pay attention to that subscription feed. I don't know, maybe, maybe you'll have your question answered soon. Or maybe I'm just playing it because it's a really good game. Back off. It's, prob it's probably the first thing I mentioned, though. As I was playing Ninja Gaiden, I was taken aback by how well executed the cinematic cutscenes are. The intro cinematic, for example, uses minimal animation to convey action, juxtaposing images to convey two ninjas in battle. Parallax scrolling timed just right conveys depth and increases tension simultaneously. Everything here could be done with a PowerPoint slideshow and some animated GIFs, and despite the simple execution, the result is powerful. In all, I was surprised by the cinematic storytelling in the game. Then I immediately questioned why I was surprised. I play a lot of video games and I think a lot about video games and given that context, I tend to view games from an armchair game design perspective. I like having conversations that include phrases like game feel and Ludo narrative dissonance and hey, come back, why doesn't anyone like talking to me? When I play an older game like Ninja Gaiden, for some reason, I expect everything to be primitive. I expect simple level design, thin story, a few core mechanics per game, each with a few verbs to expand on the gameplay. And most of the time, those expectations are met. But when those expectations are eclipsed, I'm stunned for some reason. It's incredible. Who'd have thought that the ancient cavemen from the 1980s could take enough time away from fighting off saber-toothed tigers and drawing stick figures on cave walls to recognize that pressing a directional button should move a character on screen in that respective direction? <laughs> now this surprise isn't actually all that irrational. I would be a fool to think that games haven't evolved as player bases and developers themselves have evolved over the decades. More players have a wider video game lexicon, meaning more conversations about game design can happen, meaning a more informed public is involved in the discourse that pushes game development further. Overall, video games today are objectively much stronger representations of the form and the potential of the form than they've ever been. That's to be expected. Products from early generations in any industry are generally rougher than products from later generations. Now I know there are plenty of examples of early generation games that are much better than modern games, yes, but as a whole, I'm comfortable saying that games have gotten stronger over the years. So what's my point? Well, my point is when seeing the cinematic cutscene in Ninja Gaiden for the first time in decades, I was reminded of a concept called illusory superiority which is when a person overestimates their own qualities and abilities in relation to the same qualities and abilities of other people. Illusory superiority is a positive illusion that I feel actually has some logical sense. You know, I know what I know. I don't know what someone else knows. Therefore, I'm comparing a known against an unknown, ultimately determining that the known is stronger, which feels safe. 
Now broaden this idea out from just a single person to an entire society and cast it over generations. That's what I felt when playing Ninja Gaiden. I realized that I tend to think modern inventions in general or modern game design specifically are aggressively modern, meaning I inadvertently dismiss the achievements of the past. Maybe part of this is about remaining optimistic for the future. Nostalgia is similar in how it creates the sense of optimism for the future. Bad and good stuff happens to a person throughout their entire lives, even in childhood, but over time, memories of the bad things tend to soften while memories of the good things tend to sharpen, meaning I have an overall net positive perspective of the past. This means I would tend to see the future as also capable of positive things because I remember as a whole that positive things are both possible and consistently occurring. From an evolutionary perspective, this is very powerful. Similarly, generational illusory superiority, the sense that the current generation is smarter than previous generations, creates a sense of positive forward progress that's a helpful mindset for societies to prosper. But it's also a bias, with negative aspects, as all biases have. When I discover that older video games are doing things that I think of as modern, like cinematic cutscenes, I'm deflated slightly in that I have to question how far we've really evolved in the field of video game development. Of course, it's easy to simply look at game footage from the past and notice stark differences when compared to game footage from a contemporary game, but just as we have seen advancements, we're also perhaps not as advanced as we would like to think. Cutscenes are still cinematic. We still use directional buttons and face buttons. For as much as things have evolved, they've also retained a lot more traits of their ancestors than maybe I would have expected. This isn't bad, good video game design is always good video game design, but when viewed through the generational illusory superiority lens, recognizing what elements have not changed much over the years has a somewhat depressing effect. You know, rather than thinking, wow, our current generation is so advanced. Good job, humanity. There's a sense of, wow, our current generation is so advanced. Good job, humanity. <laughs> At least we haven't advanced beyond sarcasm for the purposes of this joke. Think about this. There's evidence that ancient Egyptians used batteries. That's crazy. We, we think of the battery as a pretty modern invention, but it's possible a civilization from over 4,500 years ago had this technology already, and here we are in 2021 still using batteries. I'm not dismissing that our modern batteries are certainly much more advanced than the ancient Egyptian batteries, but just the idea of what we think of as modern is actually ancient feels like a gut punch to our very concept of advanced civilization. At least it does to me, and that depresses me a little bit. I think though, that ultimately I'll defer to being wowed by modern video games while also being wowed by the ingenuity of past generations, even though I'm still somewhat dismissing the achievements of the past by using a phrase like wowed by the ingenuity, which feels like the equivalent of trying to praise a five-year-old for using a pencil to pick his nose. Wow, what a creative use of the pencil, Sam. You had a booger and you wanted it out of your nose. And we told you not to pick your nose with your finger, so you used a pencil. I respect your ingenuity. Now go wash your hands, okay? And, and, and burn that pencil. I'll probably always default to generational illusory superiority no matter how much I try to use logic to navigate myself out of it, which is a shame, because older video games deserve better than just my respect and appreciation. Can they be both stark reminders that we've not come very far while also giving our current generation a superiority bias that keeps us moving forward? Is it possible to simultaneously hold both states in our brains? Can video games be both batteries in a pyramid and a Tesla at the same time? Honestly, it's probably not possible to believe both of those things simultaneously. But what I can do is flip back and forth between the two states often enough to keep myself and my love of video games both grounded and willing to be constantly impressed. Now tell me in the comments below what you think of this concept. Do you see older video games as reminders of how far we've come or of how far we still have to go? And please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to make sure you don't miss future videos. If you're still watching this video, you obviously like it, right? So it only makes sense to give it a thumbs up and subscribe.